Hi there everyone. I made this video uh, to demonstrate the POP1. I know I've been doing a lot of POP2, but uh, I notice people are picking up some used POP1s now. Uh, maybe still some people are still buying new POP1s. Uh, still a good little scanner. Um, so here I'm trying all the different techniques that I've developed using the POP2 on this little baby head that I found out in the desert next to my house here in in the Mojave Desert in Joshua Tree and I tried the various techniques uh, such as marker mode and feature mode um, I used that little scan ring there that uh, was developed by a user on the official group on Facebook the official Rebel Point user group um, but somebody caught my attention. They said that they had borrowed a POP1, and it, it, it made me realize that there are a lot of POP1s out there that probably have old firmware. Um, the users didn't have the patience to learn to use them and threw them in a drawer somewhere. I've seen stories about that. And then, of course, some of them have bought a POP2 thinking they'd have better success, but... And the POP1 does a fine little job. And here, this is uh, all my fails. I've included those in the beginning of the video here so you, can, so you can see that not every scan is straightforward. I have thousands of hours behind my scanning. See, I got double head there. That was in the, the marker mode. Trying it again. I wanted to show you something here. You know, of course, once you start scanning in marker, you, you, you can't move the object. See there, it just popped out of alignment. I just saw it. See, now I moved it. You can't do that in marker mode. Because it will not track. You will never get it to track. So I'm just, I decided to process that a little bit, see what it looked like, and see it's terrible. It's terrible. So now we're out to the, my successful scans here. This is my scan plate, the cut acrylic prototype. I laser cut the patterns in there and, and glued them up so I have uh, three millimeters up and three millimeters down, you know, three millimeter holes. and. 3 millimeter projections, all at random with random sizes and shapes and orientations, so gives it a real good grip for tracking. Yeah, everyone that sees this head says it feels real spooky looking. It's just a plastic baby head. It's probably... I'd say this might be, it might be 40 years old. It might be older than that. I don't know. How long have they been making plastic baby heads? As I said, the the empty lot next door was occupied at one time, but not, not since I've been here, since 2006. There was an old shed there and some old vehicles. And <laughs> the wind eventually knocked the shed down and people eventually came and scavenged all the vehicles and hauled everything off. There's still a few stacks of old tires over there, but and I scavenged those once in a while to use for something around here. And so you notice my depth gain. I try to keep that as low as possible because the higher gain you have, the more noise you're going to pick up and have to deal with later. And one other thing, somebody mentioned that they couldn't get a file to export as a .stl. Well, you have to mesh it first. RevoScan or RevoStudio, either one. Neither one will let you export a file as as an STL, if it's only a fuse, if it's only a point, fuse point cloud, it has to be meshed. 
or you could always export it as a as a .obj or a .ply and use it with other software It'd be fine 3d builder can see the .ply it can see the .obj the .sto and it can convert to and from so I just nearly always save in POI. It really depends on what I'm going to do with it afterwards. I'm not always going to print with it. Not a bad mesh, huh? Now just save that file away and do the next scan okay now we're yep, I'm going to scan it upside down to get the other view check my gain over there make sure that I usually go into auto first on the gain settings go into auto and let it make the adjustment and then uh, put it to manual and tweak it from there a little bit if I need to but it does a pretty good job this new software is just night and day beyond what handy studio and handy scan were it's They've done such a super job. A little shout out to Vivian Lee. She's a, a manager in the developers group, I believe. But I watched her on a live stream answering questions and demonstrating the pop two she is a very smart woman and all the rebel point team are pretty smart too i i really enjoy my interaction with them baby head with a little halo huh? we'll chop that off later in Revel Studio I'm going to show you the whole thing on the first go I got interrupted by a phone call from a pushy TV customer so I had to deal with that and start all over Just kind of like to look everywhere, see how it looks, see if there's very much boogery stuff. But as I said, I'm not I'm not looking for a perfect scan here because I'm just doing a demo. I don't intend to print it or do anything else with it. It'll just be sitting in my <laughs> in my mounds and mounds and mounds figurative figurative mounds of computer data. I have gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of previous scans just tons of scans not bad huh couple holes but like I said we're not trying to be perfect here I'm just showing you how I do it Okay, now we get to Revel Studio. We can see what we can do with the scans we got. First thing you want to do is chop off that stuff. Really neat, really neat tools they have in here.
and the odd thing is, as a developer, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, not a developer, a beta tester, I um, would always get uh, new revisions before they hit the public, but in this particular case, I got exposed to this the same time you guys did. <laughs> it was a surprise to me, but what a treat. It was worth waiting for. And in the interim, I learned to use some other software, too. I learned uh, quite a bit of Mesh Lab and some Mesh Mixer. And then just recently, I got into Mesh Mixer a little bit more. I'm almost ready to use uh, the 3D Cut and Paste to do my own creations in Mesh Mixer. But here I just go through these, these tabs one at a time. In this case... Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of simplification because they were pretty tight already. I brought the other one in. I, I saved that one away. Brought the other one in. Chopped the stuff off again. I smoothed it a little bit, not much. It's already kind of smooth. I do the overlap detection. I like to do that to make sure it's as tight as I can get it without without extra vertices or faces. Now we're going to get the float file. And that would be the first one I saved away. And I'm going to use the uh, merge type as, as features, by features. Uh, you see it put it together pretty well. Sure reduces the messing and fiddling around and setting markers and all that. Just smooth it a little bit. weren't any overlaps so I just didn't proceed with that we're gonna mesh it I just put it at a common setting in the middle nice mesh there's a couple little boogers on it but good for a demo I think Now there's another one there, Enhance. I haven't quite figured out yet what that one actually does. I haven't seen much of any difference <laughs> with my eyes, but uh, I'm sure it does something. It's not just a dummy button. There I took it into uh, Mesh Mixer. Check it out a little bit. And um, I did do the analysis on it before, not in this video here, but I did it before I shot this this footage here. So I just wanted to smooth it a little bit more in Mesh Mixer because I learned how to use the smooth function. I learned how to do it. Yeah, I learned that when I did the, the POP2 body scan. Still trying to learn the other, the other apps, you know, the more common popular high-powered apps. Uh, my eventual goal is to get up into Blender and be able to use it. That's a ways away. I love that color. <laughs> I wish we'd keep that color. But it smooths it pretty well in here. Makes it look a little shiny. But uh, missed that spot there because I, I didn't have it centered in the page so I couldn't I couldn't get the lasso around it. I'm going to tell it to deform to smooth. And 
we'll accept it. Well, there you have it, a POP1 scan post-processed with Handy Studio, I'm sorry, Revo Studio, and scanned with Revo Scan. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hope this helps you guys.